Smart Pack fans, welcome back to our Ask the Vet video series with Dr. Lydia Gray, Smart Pack staff veterinarian and medical director. I'm a Smart Packer, Sarah, and because of our scheduling snafu back in June, we uh, have a lot going on. We mm, just we did do. a whole other video. It was awesome. We're doing back-to-back -back videos, and we are ready to go. Pumped. Yeah, we're very excited. And so we are here, as always, to answer the questions that you guys submitted and voted on and voted to the top. And if you have a question that was submitted and answered in this video, you get a Smart Pack gift card. That's true about all of our videos. If you've had a question submitted before or you have one in this video and you haven't gotten your gift card, email customercare at smartpack.com. I thought you were going to say shame on you. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Also, I mean, that's free money, so you got to go claim it. Email customercare at smartpack.com and we'll get you all set up. Without further ado, cool. I'm going to jump in because I'm very great. excited about the questions yeah. we got. Our first question was submitted by Lindsay at blog at smartpack.com and blog.smartpack.com. Got to get that right. <laughs> it's not an email address. Uh, and Lindsay is wondering, I was wondering, she was wondering, if you could go into detail about what kind of information you track in Newman's journal. Ooh, I'm so excited to hear this. Do you keep track of every ride or just monitor his general health? I would like to start a journal for my two horses, but would like some more detail on what kind of information is useful to keep track of. Congratulate Great you on question. wanting to start a journal for your horse. I meant to bring his journal mm. today and I forgot it. So, oh. But the good news is, I also wrote a blog on this, and I took pictures. So when that gets yeah. uploaded, link then in the description. Yeah, click down there. there. You can go see those so, pictures. Good questions. What do I track? Um, I track in the very front. You know, there's those blank note pages. I track the wellness work, like uh, vaccines, deworming, when the dentist was out, when his feet were done, all his all his body workers, um, saddle fitters, mm -hmm. any kind of work like that. Um, I also track on a different page, but in the front, any and all lessons, clinics, shows, trail rides, basically any any time I left the farm and, mm -hmm. and did any event sort of thing. And then um, the meat of the journal, though, is, is the daily rides, and I do track every ride because that's how I find out things that I, I because I follow the trends. Mm -hmm. And what I find is, like, I figured out he had PSSM, because I would have recorded that we went to a show, let's say, here and here and here and how far it was. And then for the next couple of days, he just was sort of not himself, kind of mm. punky and just didn't have energy and there were some other problems. And after a while, I began to notice that it was a trend, like every time. And so then I pursued it farther. Um, and I think that's how I figured out he was a head shaker. And I just, I write down, I write down things like the temperature, you know, the heat and the humidity, um, what the weather was doing, was it raining or snowing or was there a tornado, you know, things like that. And, and those kinds of facts along with how he did that day and what we worked on really helped me uncover early any problems. I mean, I record his body condition score and I, I weight tape him. I, I did the height thing. I don't have to keep doing that because he's pretty leveled off by now. He's 16. Um, he's growing emotionally now. <laughs> he's growing this way. <laughs> so, um, but I, I do. I, I, I feel like if I write down everything, I keep track, especially on the month at a glance pages where when you open up the, the paper journal that I use, but you can do all this electronically too. You can look at a month at a glance and then I can see, say, when I started a particular supplement, like we went on the spirulina pellets mm -hmm. and it really helped with his uh, breathing problems. And then I said, I don't think it's really helping, so I stopped it. But then they came back, so mm -hmm. I'm like, start it, start it, start it. Yeah, um, good test. Yeah, and medication, you know, like when, whenever he's on a puffer, so whenever I use a new puffer, I put down open the new puffer, you know. And so I, I can keep track how long they last and when it needs to be reordered. So that little book, I, I lost it about two months ago and I, I panicked. I thought my life was over. So maybe have a backup copy <laughs> um, if you do it. But it, it's immensely helpful. So I, I love, love that. It. Yeah. Newman's journal. <laughs> Newman's the best. It's more exciting than mine, let me tell you. <laughs> Our next question was submitted by Kate GB, interesting, in a polling Aww. environment. We're just going to leave that there. And this question <laughs> was submitted on YouTube. 
And Kate GB is wondering what the pros and cons of packing your horse's feet are. Mm, that's a good question. I know some people who recommend packing horse's feet when they're finished showing and others who pack their horse's feet when they have abscesses. If you mm. do recommend packing the hooves, what do you recommend packing them with? So there's kind of two parts. Yeah. Do you do it? And if you do it, what do you use? I, whatever that's a hoof question, I turn to our hoof health consultant, Danvers Child. Oh, Danvers. We hope you're having fun at the Forge of July. We miss you. And he wrote me a great response, which I'll read, but there are some of the products that um, we carry as far as hoof packing. And they come in a variety of, of forms, formats, ingredients. So you want to read about all of them. So decide what you want it for and then choose the best one. But this is what Danver says. Uh, hoof packing is situational, individual, and your best advice comes from your hoof care professional. Mm -hmm. you no know, surprise there. It's typically done for one of five reasons. To moisturize the hoof, to eliminate excess moisture from the hoof. Mm -hmm. Interesting. To provide support for the hoof, to address bacterial or fungal issues within the hoof, mm -hmm. and to address inflammation or bruising in the hoof. Mm. I lost my page. There we go. The traditional approach to packing for any and all of these five concerns is to utilize a bentonite clay based packing. Okay. Which, combined with some herbal ingredients, works as a poultice to soothe sore hooves, tendons, and ligaments. This is an excellent choice following strenuous activity. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure she mentioned that one. And most products can be used on the lower limb as well as the solar surface of the hoof, the, the solar surface being the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, these clay-based products do tend to harden and dry after application and require a certain skill level for ap application. Mm -hmm. um, they, they do, they're quite messy, they get, they get in my hair anyway. Yeah, that's true. Uh, other products which are commonly used by farriers as under a pad the long-term packings have recently also become quite popular. Mm -hmm. These products, which commonly use a leather dust base or rosin, offer similar results, yet they maintain a more consistent, soft texture and are often more appropriate for a novice application. Huh. So I, I, learned, I read this three times and I learned a ton because I, I personally don't use a lot of hoof packing. I have. It's not a staple, but I, I'm I'm thinking maybe I should. Yeah. Sounds really great. Yeah. So. It's always nice when a super farrier endorses a product and tells you you're using the right tells thing. Tells you how to use it and why and like the pitfalls, like what to watch out for. He's so great. Yeah. I limit him to 100 words and maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> If you if if, it's, if it, we're gonna have longer Danvers answers, I'm gonna need you to do his accent. Oh, I'll work on it. It's wonderful. I'll work on it. We have some Danvers videos that you guys should check out. If you just search on our page for Danvers, you'll and then they can hear, hear the accent themselves. I know, it's so good. He he has a whole video on hoof packing, how to wrap a hoof. Oh, does and he? And he yeah, he walks oh, you through should, how to wrap it up. We should link to that. Yeah, one. we'll do that. No, so you got it. All right, our second, third question. Wow, we're flying through these. I know. This one's by CAB. We've got all kinds of alphabetical things going on here. CAB187 on Instagram is wondering, how do you tell when it's too hot to ride your horse? Ooh, this is a good one. We get this question a lot. Mm -hmm. Does Smart Pack have any items that would help with keeping cool this summer? Do we ever? <laughs> so, um, you know, when I read online about people that are having conversations about when it's too hot to ride, it's interesting that the people who live in the northern climate, like, oh, it's 75, I'm so hot. And then the people in the south just, it's just a solid, all caps, ha, 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 ha. And, <laughs> and maybe you're rolling them for laughing. But, so it a little bit varies from where you are mm -hmm. and what you're acclimated to. That's a huge component of heat and, and really cold too. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's vice versa. Um, there is a, a rule of, of 150 that when you add the temperature and the humidity, if it's 150 or greater, you either shouldn't work or you should really take it easy. So that and would that's be about like riding, not like going to work. You yeah. still have to go yeah, to work. Yeah, don't go to work if it's not 150. A <laughs> um, so like a, that would be like a 90 degrees and a 60 percent humidity. Okay. So it's not as, like, that's not exactly the heat index because it's a little bit more complicated. There is an algorithm. It takes into account um, the sun intensity, the cloud cover, uh, wind, mm -hmm. because, you know, you feel cooler on a day when there is a breeze outside versus there is nothing moving and it's muggy and yeah. warm and you're like, oh, you're out there for just a few minutes and you can't take it. So a little bit, use your common sense. Certainly, if you moved a horse to an area that was cool and now it's warm, he's going to need to get used to it. Um, 
if a horse is not fit, the time to ask him for that 100 mile trail ride is not the hottest, muggiest day of the year. Because mm -hmm. horses sweat to cool, to keep their core temperature at 99 and a half degrees. If the sweating mechanism is inefficient as it becomes when the, the air is full of moisture, they're, they're not going to be able to cool off and then their core temperature is going to rise and that can actually become dangerous for them like it's dangerous for people. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit using your head. So definitely that 150 is kind of a good rule of thumb. It is. To the rule yeah. of 150 is yeah. a good place to get you thinking about it. But if, you, if you're worried about it, it's probably not worth the risk. Ride in the morning, ride at night, but don't feel like you need to go out there and, yeah. and go crazy. Cause and if you have a show planned, I mean, even though you've, you've paid money or whatever and it's all planned, use your head. Yeah. You know, you don't have to do this. It's, it's not worth it. Yeah. Our next question is from Henriette Oakhart on YouTube, and Henriette is wondering, what exercises could I do when it's hot? Lunging? Poles? That's an interesting question. It's a good follow-up question to the heat one. So for the next couple months, you might need to be a little bit creative and inventive. We're hitting on some real hot topics today. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, I did. So lunging um, is a maybe because you know you can lunge and take it easy or you you've seen I'm sure you've seen people oh I've seen thoroughbreds lunge and just full gallop and they're like motorcycle leaning and they go on and like for half an hour like in a round pen mm -hmm. that's excessive same with poles you can lay poles in the ground and go over them at different distances and and you can go forwards and backwards and sideways and do all sorts of fun things or you can raise them up and big trot and really be fatiguing. So the lunging and poles are a maybe depending on how you do them. Mm -hmm. Well, what else can you do? Um, you could teach your horse to ground drive. Mm -hmm. um, some call it long lining. I know the um, NAWD, which is North American Western Dressage, they actually have, have uploaded to their website six um, ground driving or long lining tests mm -hmm. that you can do and some of them I think there's maybe two that are just flat on the ground and then there's a couple that involve a cones which would be another fun thing to add to your repertoire mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe two more involve uh, poles so those are fun and interesting there's there is a organization of horse agility and so a lot of oh, I like that. yeah so a lot Mini of horse things, agility no no full. The, well, but yeah, but, but if cute. you're looking for some YouTube videos, like after you watch all of our <laughs> videos, you should check out some mini horse agility. Yeah, but think of everything that dogs do, and horses do a lot of the same things. They they weave cones, and they jump, and they they hang down the like, rubber noodles that you use mm -hmm. in, the in pool noodles. pools. pools mm -hmm. Yeah, and horses go through them, or, or not. Um, Tarpaulins, you can you can hang them. You can. Um, this way, you can hang them this way. You can have horses walk over them. That word Water. she just used was like tarps. Oh, <laughs> oh, it must be Midwest things. Yeah. Um, so you can, if, if, but if you don't want to work, 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 and teach your, you can use clicker training. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Um, Carrot stretches. Good yeah. One. Yeah. I, I have written down here. Um, get Hillary Clayton's book, Activate Your Horse's Core, because she teaches you how to do. Uh, care it's it's carrot stretches and beyond mm -hmm. so it's she she knows how to work every muscle in your horse's body just going through that book is going to take you a month so you get through the hottest part of the year I like uh, Linda Tellington Jones mm -hmm. for the, the t-touch yep she has lots of, of exercises and so like there's one where you back through an L cones on the ground mm -hmm. that's fun and also just using the the t-touch the method on your horse you can learn that so there's there's tons of stuff you can do, and not even the not even including the vet stuff. You could practice body condition scoring. Yes. You could weight tape. There's all sorts of things you could practice taking vitals. If you don't know how to take temperature, pulse, and respiration, now's the time. Yeah. So and so you can nerd out on that stuff. Oh, you can yeah. braiding and banding. This is a great time. That is not strenuous Super. for your horse, no. but it's a good time to get a lot of practice. And you're getting some bonding time and giving mm -hmm. your horse some mental activity. I also um, I grew up doing showmanship and 4-H and the quarter horse circuit, and so it's yeah. a nice. You can do a lot, and it's the same thing with backing mm -hmm. through the L's. You can do mm -hmm. a trail class like the agility yep. just in hand because. Yeah. 
if you don't really think of, you don't think about it necessarily as much, but when you get off your horse on a hot day, when you take that saddle off, they're really sweaty under there. So if you take that element out, you can do so much of what you're doing on their back just in hand. Yeah, some groundwork, super yeah. fun. Awesome, great question. Last but not least, Pony Girl Morgan on Instagram asked, what is the difference between tying up and colic? That's a super question because while they sound like very different issues, and they are, they can have some similar signs. And so if you don't know what you're looking at, you might not call the vet at the right time or do the right things or the right treatment. So we have a list from AAEP, the American Association of Equine Practitioners, a, a pr fairly lengthy list. And we've had it on different videos, and I'm sure we can add it to this one. But it's things like, like pawing and rolling and not eating, um, looking at the side. My horse does the, the flame and the lip curl, and there's maybe 10 or so more. Uh, those are pretty classic signs of, of colic, and colic being abdominal pain. Mm -hmm from a host of reasons. So that's colic tying up. The um, medical term for that would be exertional rhabdomyolysis. And there's an H in there. Just figure out where it is. There's a Y. Yeah, there's all, yeah. And th so that's the medical term. And what it, the classic signs or the classic presentation of it are the horse who is um, unable or, or reluctant to move because it's cramping in the hind end. Mm. And so the, the back and, and butt, croup, loin, and hamstrings or hindquarter muscles will be firm, uh, hard even, mm -hmm. and, and painful. And we're talking more skeletal muscles, not cramping like people think of Not cramping. abdominal cramping, no. This is like behind the saddle, behind legs, like a Charlie horse, mm -hmm. like a Charlie horse. So, um, but they also might sweat the colicky horse might sweat because sweating can be a sign of pain in horses. Mm -hmm. They can have a high heart rate and high respiratory rate, same as in colic. Again, signs of pain in horses. So if that's all you're seeing, it kind of be a little tricky to tell what's what. Mm -hmm. So you know, the the horse that's colicking, what do people like to do? Like to walk it. Yep. However, that's the worst thing you can do if a horse is tying up. So you really do have to be able to recognize pretty quickly which one is which, and for either one you want to call the vet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are all the questions we have. That said, I feel like we missed something because I was wondering, because I know we have some products back here that we didn't talk about, oh. and it was the, do we have any products to help keep oh, you cool this summer? We did miss that. And do we ever? I yeah. don't remember what happened with this question, but I got so excited. We talked about when it was too hot to ride, and that's such a great topic, so we got distracted. Look what I found. But CAB 187, we are going to answer the second half of your question. This is cooling, cooling technology. Which is very cool. Yeah, very hip. Pun intended. <laughs> so you, you wet this and you put it on your horse and it helps. I, I think I, I read about this. I think it can reduce by the, uh, the ambient temperature around the horse, like 30 degrees or something crazy. And the really cool thing is if you don't wet it, you can use it in the winter then as like a, a wicking to wick the sweat off after you ride and dry your horse faster. So it's, it's a year-round technology, but I haven't used it. It's new for us, I think. Um, I would like to. Mm -hmm. I think it's a super product, so that's what I recommend for your horse. I also found this. Yep. I, you know, when I was answering this question, I just kept finding stuff. Yep. This is getting awesome reviews. It's a sunflower sun coat. It's for horses who have some, well, that you don't want to bleach out because they have a beautiful bay coat or black or whatever. But imagine, too, if they have white somewhere mm -hmm. and it's pink skin under white hair versus dark skin under dark hair. Mm -hmm. And this can help that, help protect them because it's, it's UVA and UVB both. So this is getting rave reviews. And I also like these fly masks that have the long noses also provide some protection for those white noses, those yeah, pink noses. when you have yeah. those markings and you and, can get and that peeling and skin. Skips, yeah. yeah, and it's painful because it gets really red, you yeah. know? So. so there's a lot of yeah. things that we have to help you cover up. We also um, did an article called Beat the Heat um, in one of our recent uh, supplement nutrition guides that we sent out, and that has some product picks to both protect you from the sun and help you keep your cool. So we'll for include a link to that. Too. Yeah, like for people. the long sleeve shirts. We have a lot of sun yeah. shirts, and they have really cool ventilation under the arms. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cool products. We're very passionate about it here at Smart Pack. And of course, 
A little shout out, free shipping both ways. <laughs> free ship over 75 and free returns on sized items. So it's the smartest place to try a new product yeah. like a Kool-Aid blanket. All right, well those were all the questions we have. Now that we've gone back, I can't believe First time it's oh, happened I know. to us. I'm so excited about mentioning this. All right. So thank you guys all for the questions. Even the multi-part questions, we will answer all of the parts of the questions. And you Eventually. guys, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we'll get around to it in our own sweet time. You guys can submit questions for future videos on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You use hashtag Ask the Vet videos so we can keep track of all those great questions. Yeah. You can add them in a comment on a YouTube video or at blog.smartpack.com. You can email, chat, or text our customer care team at customercare at smartpack.com or using the chat or text on our website. And you can actually text from your smartphone. We got one of our text questions. It was very it exciting. exciting. So we, right when you're in the barn, you think of the question, just text it to yeah. SmartPack, and we'll look into it this for you. This sounds really hard because there's a lot of words, but it's it's not. It's very no. easy. It's there's a lot of words because there's just so many ways. Yeah. Like you just, you were one step away from you just think of the question, and then Lydia and answers And we'll soon, I bet you. a month or two, we'll be there. Yeah. You just yeah. Think Nels is question. working on it. All right, so that's all we have. Thank you guys so much for the great questions. If your question was answered, email our customer care team and we'll get you your smart gift card because you want to be able to use it on some of this cool stuff. Yeah, that one in particular. And subscribe so you can see when we're looking for questions for our next video. As always, thank you guys for watching and have a great ride.